G'day guys, James here. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hang a piece of art, a mirror, a picture frame, anything like that that's heavy into a timber stud wall. I've had a lot of people in some of my other videos ask questions about how to do it into timber and what some of the other techniques are. So I'm gonna show you some of the tools, some of the tips. Let's get into it. All right, so here's the basic tools you're gonna to need. A level for leveling it up, hammer. Now these are some heavy duty rings that need to go onto the back here to support our wire. Now these wires, I'll do a bit of a close up, but I'll talk more about them later. This can take up to a 45 kilo capacity. These rings can take a 25 kilo capacity each. So by the time we use two of those, it's gonna take us up to 50. Don't use the screws that come with those. Change them for some more heavy duty screws. They're eight gauge timber screws that are gonna go in for here. Couple of Velcro double-sided hooks to put on the corners of the, your mirror once you put it up. Tape for measuring. You're gonna need an impact driver or a Phillips head screwdriver and then also a normal drill bit with your drills. The biggest thing here, the most important thing, are these screws. These are called 14 gauge bugle screws, and this is what's gonna go into our stud wall and support that wire, which is then gonna support the frame. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is lay our mirror down. Just make sure that floor's clean so we don't scratch it up. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take these heavy duty D rings and I'm gonna put one of these on each side of the frame. That's what our wires are gonna to attach to. So they will go one here somewhere and one over here somewhere. All right, so attaching these things. Like I said, don't use the standard screws that come in there. That's a pretty crappy little small brass screw. So use your bigger eight gauge or 10 gauge screws. And then it's simply a matter of picking a drill bit. It's just big enough for the shaft to fit. You want the thread to go through. But the solid part of the screw, that's what I'll call the shaft. You want a bit, drill bit that's just about that size. So that way that the thread's still got something to grab on each side. Pop that in your drill bit and then just pre-drill those out. Nice and solid. You hear that's an impact driver. I find that better than your standard Phillips head, just normal drill bit, because it drives the screws in at the same time and it stops some heads from slipping. All right, so now you want to grab your wire, tie that between the two D rings, and then that part of the mirror is set and ready to hang on the wall. Next stage is then to put the bugle screws into the wall to find the studs, knowing where we're gonna hang this to spread the load. And I forgot to mention, you're probably gonna need some wire cutters or clippers just to cut this to the length that you need. I'll show you a close up of this in a minute, but basically just tying a knot in the end and then wrapping this wire around. And you wanna cut this probably about an extra 200 millimeters longer. So you've got length to tie it off and wrap it around. And I generally keep it pretty tight between the two D-rings because that will stretch once the weight of the mirror is taken up on the wall. So pull that through. Tie it back off on itself. You should get a bit of a knot there. Then wrap the excess back around the wire. I recommend you get the braided wire, not the stainless steel cable, because that is actually hard to tie off, versus this, it actually moulds and stays into place. Now you see there, I tried to keep it pretty tight, but there is a bit of slack in that. But we're gonna try and get two studs back closer to the fixing points here, and that's where these bugle screws are going to be hung back something like that. The weight of that should still have the wire behind the frame and not exposed. And even if it is exposed, it's not the end of the world. All right, time to get on the wall, but now to mark it out. Now to find the studs, this is always the tricky part. Now, you can use a stud finder. Sometimes the batteries are flat in them, they're not always reliable. Or you could use a knock and tap method. So it's basically where you put a bit of pressure against the wall, make sure your hands and everything are clean, and then you 
tap along and then you'll notice the difference where it's hollow and then when it gets solid. So hear that solid there. So I know there's definitely a stud there. What I'm also able to do, I'm lucky because we've just built this place recently, is I can look down and there should be nails in the skirting because we marked where the studs were so that we get good fixings down there. So sometimes if you're in a property, that could be a good giveaway or a good tell, is to look down and see if you can find any of the putty marks where the nails are. And generally speaking here in Australia, all studs are either at 450 millimeter centers or 600 millimeter centers. So in theory, once you find one stud, you should be able to measure across some of those distances and you'll get a general feel of where the stud should be. So I'm gonna mark mine and I'm gonna to wanna to put a stud, put one in the stud close to the edge and then one further out here. All right, so here for our first one, the mirror is actually sitting pretty close to where it's gonna go on the wall as you come in the entry of the door. The mirror is gonna be the first thing you see. So it works out that coming off our wall, all our studs are basically spaced at 450 millimeter centers. So where I go 450 there, and I look up here, I can actually see where they've puttied up one of the nail holes in the skirting. So I know if I level that up, that should be where my first stud is. And I can also you know, tap that as well to double check, like I showed you before. So you hear that hollowness and then it comes back to hard. So where that 450 is, then in theory, I should just be able to measure 450, 450 off that all the way through to pick up all my studs. But I will double check just by tapping them and then looking down here to see where the nails are in the skirtings. So I'm gonna plumb that up and put a mark at the height that I want up above. Now I just have to work out my height. I guess as far as height goes, probably about 1800 would be a good height to the top. Probably want to leave enough here. We're going to put a little side table in here at about 900. So I want to leave enough if I've got that there. I don't know, maybe some flowers or some pictures or something going at the bottom of the mirror then comes down. So, all right, let's do this at two meters to the top. Two meters to the top and then you want to work out what type of slack you've got in this. So we're too close to the edge here. That wire is going to be for me down from the top, probably only about 30 or 40 millimeters. So if I want the top of it to be at about two meters, So now we want to insert our bugle into the wall. Now this is the most important part. This is what's going to be carrying all the weight. So you must pick up a stud directly behind there and then pre-drill for this so you can get good fixings. All right, so it's the same deal here. Once you've got your mark, get a drill bit that is just a bit thicker than the actual shaft on your bugle bit that's going to go on the wall and then pre-drill that and make sure you hit the stud behind it. So we've got sawdust coming out there, which is a good sign. Once you got that pre-drilled, then this is just where you want to change over from your standard Phillips head bit to a bugle bit that will fit inside the head of those hexagon shaped head on it. Now depending on how much you want your frame to stick out, I like to leave maybe just about a finger width behind there to be able to hook that steel over or that cable. If you want the mirror to be back a bit more, you can take that in, but there's less a chance of catching the rope as you put the mirror over. So that there is now nice and solid. And that is spot on. So now I should just really be able to measure back off that last fixing. Mark my 1350, which is three stud spacings across. Small little mark there. And put up the same height off the floor as you did with the other one, which was 1950. Just double check it with a tap. Yep, that's solid. And repeat the process. And the timber, which is good. And now my last screw. Should be ready to rock. Now for something like this, it really is a two man job. So I'll see if I can get someone else just to give me a quick lift with that. Ideally, you wanna have one person on each side so you can sort of feed the rope in behind it. It's always quite tricky, this part. All right, so I've brought in the big guns for the lift. I've got the boss here. The boss runs the show. Wave to everyone, say hi. We gotta get the tick of approval from my daughter too to make sure that this is okay. So 
you just put a level on now to get the sides right. I think it just needs to come up a little bit here. And that's in line with the entry, so where the door is when you come in the front door, that's exactly the same width as what this is. So very happy with that, that's how you hang a very heavy mirror. Like I said, that'd be at least 30 to 40 kilos, I reckon. But the last little tip is these little Velcro stick-on double-sided tape patch thingies. I like to put these on each corner, so I'll take those off and stick one under there and one under there, just especially because it is at a front door. So when someone comes in and opens the door or closes the door, it acts as a bit of an air vacuum, so it either sucks the air out or pushes the air in. So quite often, pictures of things can sort of move in and out. See, I'll pop those on now and that's just about done. Good work by the way, huh? It's the way that these work, it's loaded in Velcro, so you can take them on and off. I just stick those together, two pieces there actually, so you pull that apart. And then, it should simply be a matter of pulling the double-sided tape off one side, and then off the other, sticking it on and planting it against the wall. And then if you ever need to take it off, you can just pop it off that Velcro. Put that in and behind, push that on. We'll do the same on the other side, and that'll just stop it from moving. up and behind and then just put a bit of pressure on. And that's it, you'll see there now that that's solid, won't move side to side, and that's got all the weight as well. And now a quick little story about this picture frame. This timber is actually the old rafters that came out of our last renovation on a place we did in Sydney. These are 105 year old Oregon timbers that were the old rafters. And you can see there, it's even got the old bird's mouth where it was checked out over the top plate. So pretty cool little feature to have a story like that in your house. Now I need to get my opinion of my biggest uh, supporter over here. You want to come and tell me what you think? Let's have a look. All right, now here are my two critics. Oh, I got one here. So what do you think, girls? Done a good job or what? Bad. Bad? bad. What? Bad. What do you mean bad? Bad. <laughs> bad. Crazy kids. I'll put a link to the video where this little girl was a little bit smaller and she's a, been a critique on some of my other little home projects, haven't you? Bad, yeah. She did a bad job. Yeah. They love it. Anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Carrot! Like or subscribe, the carrot. <laughs> and if you're new, don't forget to follow along with our socials too. The carrot! Cheers guys. Catch you next time. Carrot! <laughs> you carrot? You're a carrot. <laughs> oh, you dropped the carrot. So here it is in the main entry. As you walk up and in, nice little backdrop out there. Very nice feature.